Well, good morning. It is almost Christmas. It is right on top of us. And I, for one, am super excited to share with you what is day two of our Christmas devotions. Now, wherever you are, whatever time of day it is for you, however you're watching this or listening to this, you have definitely got something else that you could be doing. You probably have to shop. You probably have to rap. You probably have to, I don't know. You've got a whole list of jobs that you need to do, but you decided to take a couple of moments to focus on God. So well done. Today's key scripture is from Luke chapter 1 and verse 13 to 17, and it is where John the Baptist is first announced onto the pages of the Bible. He bursts into the God story. Um, although we don't see him in these verses, it's foretelling of him coming. It says, but the angel of the Lord said to him, don't be afraid, Zechariah, your prayer has been heard. Your wife, Elizabeth, will bear you a son and you are to call him John. He will be a, a joy and delight to you and many will rejoice because of his birth, for he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He is never to take wine or other fermented drink and he will be filled with the Holy Spirit even before he is born. He will bring back many of the people of Israel to the Lord their God and he will go on before the Lord in the spirit and power of Elijah and turn the hearts of the parents to their children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Now, I don't know what you think of when you think of the name John the Baptist, whose birth is foretold in these verses. Uh, I think of like Bear Grylls, like a survivalist walking in the desert, dressed in fur and the skins of animals that he's wrestled before breakfast, eating the, the meat of, of the beasts that he's killed that day, full of wild stories of dark nights and near misses. I'm not sure if the picture I have in my mind is anywhere close or accurate. Uh, close to being accurate uh, and you probably imagine something completely different when it comes to John the Baptist but there's one thing for sure and that is that John had a job to do and he did it really well. He was according to this verse as you can see right at the end of verse 17 to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. His job was to prepare the way for Jesus. He knew that God was going to do something and that if he didn't do something to get ready and get the people ready, they might miss it. He was willing to reject the convenient, the conventional and the comfortable so that when God himself showed up in the person of Jesus Christ and was speaking to people, that people would be ready for it. And ultimately, it cost him his life. So what does this mean to us on our second Christmas devotion? Well, John is teaching us about the power of preparation and expectation. Most of us have spent just about all of our time and resources already getting ready for Christmas. We've shopped, we've organised, we've written cards, we've decorated our houses and we've proved to ourselves that we understand and we know that if we want to get the most out of something, then we have to get ready. So two questions for us to think about today, Audacious Church. Number one, what are you expecting God to do this Christmas? Are you praying for a friend or a family member that will come to know God for themselves? Are you hoping for restoration in a broken relationship? Are you asking God to give you a breakthrough in finance or in the provision of a job or a new opportunity? Do you want God to give you the, the answer to your prayers? Whatever it is, make sure you write it down and you make it known so that you can tell the story when it happens. Question number one, what are you expecting God to do this Christmas? 
Which leads to question two, and you can't do question two until you've answered question one, but question two is, what are you doing to get ready for it? If you're expecting a family member to encounter God, then have you invited them to church on Boxing Day? Uh, or have you written a Bible verse in their Christmas card? Or have you sent them a text that says something about faith or eternity or something? If you haven't spoken to someone for a long time and there's been some damage or some breakdown in a particular relationship, have you reached out to that person? Why don't you send them a text or give them a call or apologise or forgive? If you believe God has a financial miracle for you, then why aren't you sowing the seed of finance into the kingdom of God by blessing someone else? Zechariah and Elizabeth prepared for baby John to be born. John grew into a man, a man of God, who prepared the way for Jesus and what he was going to do on the earth. But what are your thoughts and words and attitudes and actions preparing for? Why don't we stand together in believing that God is going to do something breathtaking in our city this Christmas season and do anything and everything that we can do to get ready for it. When you know something's coming, you get ready for it. You position yourself in such a way that you won't miss it. Like a child with both arms kind of reaching out, ready to catch a ball. We need to position ourselves like that in our hearts. Get ready, get ready, get ready. Thoughts, words, attitudes, actions, lined up, prepared, expecting, believing, ready. Hashtag get ready. Love to you all. See you, church.